So today I'm going to talk about the rationale for using BAF and April inhibition for the treatment of lupus. I don't have time, unfortunately, to deal with, uh, with lupus kidneys today. And these are my um, disclosures. Okay, so BAF and April are members of the TNF family of cytokines, and they're synthesized by a number of cells, including neutrophils, macrophages, monocytes, even some tumors. BAF is made as a cell surface uh, express molecule that's cleaved by a furin-like enzyme to yield a soluble product, and about 90% of uh, all BAF is found as the circulating form, and April is made only as a uh, soluble um, molecule. BAF and April bind to several different receptors on the surface of B cells, and these include BAF receptor, TACI, and BCMA. And uh, BAF binds to all three of these receptors, whereas April binds only to TACI and BCMA. And April also binds to proteoglycans on the cell surface that serve to oligomerize April and make it bind better to its uh, uh, receptors. And when the receptors are ligated on the B cell surface, this results in uh, various uh, functions of the B cell, including B cell survival, some aspects of differentiation, and immunoglobulin secretion and class switching. So why is this relevant to lupus? When BAF was first discovered, it was shown that BAF transgenic mice developed a lupus-like autoimmune disease, and subsequently it was demonstrated that both mice and humans with lupus had elevated serum levels of BAF and sometimes of April, and also that high levels of BAF are found in inflamed target organs. And then more importantly, it was shown that if one took lupus mice and treated them with a soluble BAF inhibitor, that this markedly prolonged the survival of the animals. And this was shown in 2000. And in the nine years since 2000, uh, BAF inhibitors for use in humans have been developed. And last year, uh, the first successful use of a BAF inhibitor in human clinical phase three trials in lupus was reported. So how do we uh, go about blocking BAF? Well, there are two really major strategies. The first is to use a reagent that blocks the interaction of BAF with its receptors. And you can do this either with a fusion protein of the BAF receptor with immunoglobulin or with an antibody that's directed at BAF itself. And when you do this, uh, you block the interaction of BAF with its receptors, but April is left to interact with TACI and BCMA. An alternate strategy is to use a fusion protein of TACI with immunoglobulin, and this binds to both BAF and April, prevents them binding to their receptors, so no signals are received through any of the receptors when one uses TACI IG. There's a third strategy that's been kind of abandoned by pharma, which is to use an antibody to the BAF receptor. This basically kills B cells that express the BAF receptor. So in a sense, it's similar to TACI IG, but it also depletes B cells. Okay, so this is data from my lab, but it's been shown by lots of people that if you use either the BAF-RIG fusion protein that blocks BAF alone, or the TACI-IG fusion protein that blocks both BAF and April, that uh, this markedly prolongs survival of mice. And in this experiment, we treated the mice for about six weeks, starting at about four and a half months of age. And this resulted in prolonged survival of the animals, with some animals surviving out to uh, two years. Okay, so how does this work? So in order to understand this, we need to understand a little bit about B-cell biology. So B-cells are generated in the bone marrow and fetal liver, and they come in two uh, flavors, B1 cells and B2 cells. 